what is the relationship with money? Because that's the practical day to day. It would seem like wealth is inside of us and it's just a matter of unlocking it, having the keys to the kingdom to reveal these things to us in due time. But then the practical day to day would be our relationship with money. So I'm gonna take it to the whiteboard real quick to, to have you see what I'm thinking in my brain. What the worldview, there are uh, these personalities or characteristics that I believe exists if I had to summarize it based on how I've been interacting with people for the last six years now. And I, I picked this up from another gentleman by the name of Garrett Gunderson, um, who broke it down into the miser, the conservative, the striver, and the high roller. Every client I've worked with falls into this somehow prior to me sharing with them kingdom principles and kingdom characteristics of how our relationship should be with money, right? So the miser is someone that's interested in preservation. They want to preserve money. They want to keep it for as long as humanly possible, right? The, the conservative is interested in accumulating money, right? The, the miser is more of a, a cheap person, right? They, uh, they, they, they want to scrimp and scrap. If they, if they see the option at the restaurant of a steak versus a chicken, they, might, they will typically always choose the chicken over the steak even though they might have wanted to have the steak and they might even influence their wife or kids to also get the chicken over the steak, okay? They're always interested in preserving money. The conservative takes preservation to another level and says, not only do I wanna preserve it, but I also wanna accumulate it, compound interest, make it last really, really long. The, the striver is more so interested in status they want to have the boats, the cars, the, jo the, the, the jets, the, the million subscribers, and whatever it takes to, to get to that status. So if it means taking a, a risk, if it means taking our, our entire family outside of the state they have grew up in and move across country for a higher paycheck, a higher a, a business opportunity, a, a completely different shift in, in industry for the sake of making more money or an opportunity, uh, accepting sponsorships as a content creator that you may not even believe in, but because it's an easy paycheck, it is what it is, right? Status. And then the high roller is the gambler. And we all know that person. And the way that looks like for my people here watching, and they don't like to admit this, but I point it out and I call it out whenever they, they do it because they say one thing, but they do a whole nother different ball game when it comes to their money. They say that they're conservative Christians. They say, you know, I, 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 I want to create a secure environment for my family and I want to take care of my family. I want to be able to tithe and do all these wonderful things. But then we buy uh, Bitcoin when it reaches 40,000, two of them, <laughs> um, and then say it's going to go to the moon. Or right now they're buying so many stocks of AMC right now because it, it's around four or five dollars a share. And in 2021, during COVID, it was as high as $500 a share. So they're like just dumping a bunch of money right now into AMC stock or, or GameStop. And so we're, we're seeing a disconnect and I, and I tend to call it out because I'm like, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> you don't know anything about that industry. And you just got done telling me that we're trying to preserve, pay off debt, increase cash flow, you know, increase our credit, you know, form a foundation mm -hmm. here. And then behind my back, you know, in between phone calls, you went and did this real estate investment or you bought mm -hmm. this Bitcoin, you bought this stock. So you're technically a high roller. You just, boom, you roll the dice. And if you score, wonderful. But if you don't, it's win big, lose big, right? Yeah. So that is the world view. The kingdom view is something I, I think would need to be maybe tweaked here. Um, I'm not 100% confident in this, but I can speak to where I'm at today and, and maybe you can speak to that and maybe there could be some, some, some corrections or pivots. So I believe there is a mindful manager in terms of relationship with money as it, as it pertains to the kingdom and our relationship with money and our master, our creator, God, the father. So there's the mindful manager. There's the kingdom creator person that literally is always in a state of creation which is the highest form of wealth creation is the ability to create things and then be a blessing to others and give so i think that is powerful and then there's the kingdom planner the person that will sit and count the cost 
I can admit I'm that guy that will sit and count the cost of a potential kingdom transaction in the world. And I want to in ensure that not only does it, does it work out, but the, but the math makes sense. And then I also pray over it and submit the plan back to God. That's kind of been my uh, uh, strategy. And then there's the catalyst, or in other words, the, the, the change maker, person that goes out into the world. This, this, is, this is probably someone like you that absolutely is changing the game as it relates to creating content on social media, what that looks like as a man of faith. The, you, um, the catalyst is also tends to be like the, the CEO, the visionary, the person that comes up with an idea, executes on it, and gets a massive amount of people involved. But then in that process, they're unchanged. So mm -hmm. it's not like you get into politics and then you get bought and now your character is different. You came in with a certain philosophy that was change making, that was awesome. And during the revolution, something happened, you got bought, you got controlled of, and now your uh, values and principles have been compromised, even though you did a phenomenal thing, let's just say. Grow a, a fantastic business, a large YouTube channel. So the catalyst is someone that not only can bring change, but they're unchanged in mm. that change because they're rooted in their values, principles, things like that. So I wanna pass it to you, uh, and then we'll address some comments. And I'm excited. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a, a, a part of it. I think I think what you're doing is awesome and so needed and so valuable. Bringing that that mix of um, practicality, you've got a lot of that in you, and I think that is so valuable and so important because, like you said, you're the planner, and we need that. We need people like that helping us. Um, as far as I like everything you just said, I I have never just looked at it that way. The and and there's there's nothing wrong with that. Like I like like the way you're categorizing things and thinking through it. Man, that's so so cool, so powerful, so needed. What I want to talk about is from this kingdom perspective when it comes to wealth and money and and all these things. You got to understand just a couple simple things. This is going to set a lot of people free today. This is going to help a lot of people. Um, it's going to give them permission uh, to actually go after the life they want. Money, you have to understand this. It is not, I'm going to be super simple, but money is not a bad thing. Money is a good thing. It is not bad. And as you guys broke down on the previous videos, it is a blessing from the Lord. The Bible, this book is full of hundreds of teachings, met, uh, technically thousands of teachings and strategies and precepts and principles that teach us how to become wealthy. It's in the book. Most people don't know. Most people haven't read it. Most people have just heard somebody or saw an Instagram post, quote, some partial scripture and have built conclusions and belief systems off of that. So what I like to do is I like to point people back to what the scripture actually says about money, about success, about prosperity. Because when you know what it actually says, it's super freeing. It frees you up. It's like, oh, that's what that actually, that's the words? These are awesome. I didn't know that. So that's what that's what I feel like I'm, I'm called to do is just help you guys see and understand what the word says so that you can be successful in every area of your life, including financially. You said something interesting earlier when you talked about if all my worldly definition of wealth went away, I'd be able to make it all back. And that is also rooted in scripture. Many of you guys have heard it before, but Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you will remember the Lord your God who has given you the power to get wealth. He can establish the covenant which he made with your ancestors. The covenant he's referring to is that Abrahamic covenant you mentioned in Genesis 12. Yep. There's just another scripture that says, one translation says, remember it's your God who gave you the ability to make wealth. So he says, you've got the ability, you've got the power, you have it. Every single person who reads that scripture and accepts it has that power and ability. So if the stuff went away, that's fine. I still have the power and ability to make it, to get it. Now, we have to go activate that power and ability. You can have a power and not use it. You can have an ability and let it lie dormant. And it sets you free because the, the ending of that scripture says, 
man, I gave you that power just to establish the covenant, which a covenant, a an agreement that I made with your great, 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 great grandfather, Abraham. You can also tie it to Galatians 3.29. It says that everything I promised my servant Abraham, if you are in Christ, it now belongs to you too. So he's saying the same promises I made Abraham, they're your promises too. Now, knowing that as your foundation, if you have any money hangups when it comes to God and the kingdom, study what we just talked about. A lot of, a lot of people have a lot of guilt around money, condemnation around money, baggage, hangups, all kinds of stuff tied to their moral beliefs. And a lot of times we'll think, oh, I just need, Trav, just give me like the money-making strategy. How do I make money online right now? Do I do drop shipping? Do I do Amazon? What do I do? Uh -huh. And the truth is you actually need to get rid of your financial guilt, shame, and condemnation. And then the ideas and strategies will show up. The strategies don't matter as much as you having your belief system correct. What you believe about money, your relationship money actually matters the most. That's why a lot of times you mentioned earlier, a lot of your clients, a lot of people watching are kind of tired of living the way they've been living. Yes. They've lived this way for 30 years. The end results are burnout, disappointment, discouragement, still feeling behind, still feeling like they should be further ahead. Well, it's not that they necessarily have a strategy issue. I would propose it's more of a belief system issue. When I changed my beliefs around money, what do you know? Money started flowing easier. We we do these things where we self-sabotage, we second guess everything, we think God is mad at us, we think all this stuff that the enemy, we have an enemy, you have an opponent, you have an adversary, he wants you to lose. And when we're aware of that, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what's happening now. God wants me to win. He gave me the power to get wealth. He wants me to prosper. The enemy wants me broke, discouraged, down, and limited. I've got generous ideas. I need some money to execute these generous ideas. God's all for that. God is great with you being rich, prosperous, and wealthy. We do it in a way where we are not obsessed with money. It is not the main thing in our lives. We are not covetous. I got, I got a great revelation on that just recently. Covetous means you're constantly mindful about money. You're constantly thinking about it. Or it could be stuff. It could be the car that you want, the house that you want. You go to bed yearning and longing for it. You wake up, it's the first thought on your mind. First thought is money or how do I make more? Or how do I get this car? Or if I had this house, I'd be happy. If I had this much money, I'd be happy. If I had this in my IRA, I'd be happy. If I had this, 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 I'd be happy. That's actually being covetous. And the Bible says something interesting. It says covetousness is idolatry. When we talk about idolatry, it's anything that we put in place of God's job that God should be doing. I might be getting real deep for your audience. This is what we talk about on my channel. I'm just going to go for it. We can, yeah, we, can, we can spin it later, but it's meant to be the source of our happiness, our peace, our security, our self-worth. If having a certain amount of money makes you feel more happy, more secure, more valuable. I'm walking around, you talk about status. I'm walking around like I'm a baller now because I got more in the account. Mm. Look, I get it. I felt all those feelings. And it seems like more money in a, in a fat bank account and fat retirement and savings is going to make you feel a certain way. It doesn't. Those are good things to have, but they are not our main aim. They are not what we are to be chiefly pursuing. When we become obsessed with them, money minded all the time, when it has our attention, when it has our affection, when it, when it has our allegiance, we turn to him for those things. And here's what's great. When we do that, he adds everything else to us. My whole thing is you're going to get the wealth. You're going to get the money. You're going to get the increase. You're going to get the bank accounts. You're going to get the investments. You're going to get the retirement. You're going to get all the things. Those are great things. Nothing wrong with them, but they're not your main focus in life. They're not the main purpose. They're not the main pursuit. God has a call, a mission, an assignment, multiple ones for all of us to do. I mean, look at Denzel. He's walking in it right now. I've got to know him a little bit more over the last couple months. This guy's on a mission. And as he's on mission, what happens? His mission is not, let me go get rich and make all this money and forget everything else. No, his mission is, I got to do what God, this is like the thing on my heart. He's fulfilled 
He's having a blast, goes to bed early and wakes up early because he's on fire. He's on mission. The money's added to him. Let me ask this. Is all this. Scriptural. this is all scriptural. Let me ask this. Um, for the, the, the Christians that are like, okay, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. You said money is a good thing, right? So let me just, let me just do a, a little quick recap here before I ask what I'm going to ask. So, so far we have some legally binding contract covenants here that we can go back to on the topic of money and the and and how it's acquired and our how our relationship is with it deuteronomy 8 18 galatians 3 29 those are two that you brought up you mentioned that money is a good thing so it's not bad to have a lot of it some of it in the middle of it what it is and and you can have it and you have access you have the power within you already that's what you know you you mentioned we have the power of money wealth creation already inside of us it's a matter of simply activating that the way to activate it is tapping and seeking the kingdom first as you as you clearly laid out and what is the the primary blocker uh you could call it a a hormone blocker right in today's environment or there's these there's these blockers in our mind these um emotions belief systems coming over over here on this side what is your belief about money? This was the same question I asked everyone yesterday that attended, what is their belief about wealth? And everybody had a different answer, right? And it was all over the place. And then toward the end, we got very, very clear on what our belief about wealth is, which is, is a blessing from God. We, we came to that conclusion. And so now that we have our little foundation growing here the next major question is what is your belief about money whether you're a christian not a christian right because i do have both audiences here the majority being people of faith already so but they still get this confused the your everyday christian that has yep. read the book back and forth and and still contemplating with this because of how they talk to me on the phone when they say denzel you know you've been on social media for a while now what are the opportunities? What is the best way for me to make money here right now? I've even had pastors ask me this, ministers, deacons, people in high roles in, in the church even mention, hey, you know, how do I you know, do what you're doing? I want to bring this into the church. I want to I maximize this. I'm like, wrong question. I think first we need to figure out what is your moral belief about money and have you consulted with the Father on that topic of what should you be doing? be doing to produce said yes. money at said yeah. time at said yeah. amount right and so that that's where i'm like wait a second am i crazy or are, are are is there a big block here in in society and then lastly i have put this is what i gathered from what you mentioned as it relates to all of the the work and effort we put into making all this money is even if you are a high roller and you've had success, even if you're a striver and you reach status, even if you're a conservative Christian Republican in 2024 and you accumulate money, and even if you're a, um, I won't call you cheap, right? But you're a very restrictive uh, uh, rice and bean diet type of person, and you don't spend money. And you, you know, the other, the other nice word we use, you know, instead of cheap, we use this word frugal. Okay. And, and if you're that, even if you do all those things in this world and you win, you still lose, which is crazy mm. Mm. because it didn't come from God. You didn't initially make, establish that, that power, activate that power and have him lead us. Even if you're really good at what you do in life, you know, whatever that may, may be. Like I know from a very early age, I was pretty good with money, just always have been. Uh, my very first interaction with money was saving it because I, I just instinctively knew my mom would need it to cover a bill at a later point in time. And I would literally save all the nickels, dimes, quarters from the laundromats, from birthday gifts, whatever it was, Halloween, trick-or-treating. I would, I would accept the dollar over the candy any day of the week. That's just how I was. And eventually that money would get used at a, I would save for a future expense that mom or stepdad or whomever came short at the time. And then it got to a point where I got really frustrated at that right around 17, 18 years old. I said, you know what? I need to start go making money and be productive with it. 
and then graduating high school and then getting involved in opportunities to make good money, which I did, and then even getting to the point of starting the YouTube channel. It wasn't until I started the YouTube channel that I changed my strategy from what are my skills, gifts, and talents, and how can I present this to the marketplace? And it became, how do I seek the giver, the giver of all givers, the king, and then implement the, the, the strategy of giving, being a blessing, right? I, I discovered that really, really early on, and I've, I've kept that mentality since and made pivots along the way, like, okay, let me tweak that because I'm someone that's, here's my question for me, selfish question. I'm in money all day long. That is my work. That is what God called me to do. That is the, that's the, the role I have in the kingdom here on earth is helping people with their finances. So I'm always bombarded with, with numbers. There is an excitement. I do business with someone and I uh, obtain a new client. I'm like, you know, I get a little, I get excited. I'm like, Ooh, this, this person is going to be great for me. Right. Or this part, like this relationship is going to be great for the both of us. It's going to elevate the both of us. Cause this is going to be a win-win when I sell a life insurance policy for infinite banking or uh, an annuity, um, something that's going to, you know, create guaranteed lifetime income for that, that mom that just got out of a divorce and she's got half of the money and didn't know what the heck to do with it. And she wants to preserve it. And we're like using these different strategies. There's this excitement that occurs. Is that bad or is that, you know, uh, okay for Christians to experience my, my position is yes, totally. Unless that's what you now are after every day, Monday through Friday. And then it, you start to create this gap between getting more excited for what God wants to do in your life over the transaction of the thing that God made you to be so good at. Yeah. So that's something that I've uh, uh, wrestled with throughout the my career on YouTube and been mindful of go 50% excitement in that in that moment do i go 75 like i've played with it and then finally i just like let it go if it happens it happens you know it's kind of like where i'm at today if it happens it happens i'm gonna fully experience that in the moment and i'm also gonna throw the ball right back to god thank you give you glory to father glory to the father thank you so much i'm like really excited right now i don't want to get too far away from you but i just want to let you know i'm really excited i just picked up mrs the the smith family and they're going to be awesome. And they just paid me thousands of bucks to work with them. And it's just, it's just pretty cool. Help the yeah. everyday Christian and even myself kind of deal with that practicality of, of the excitement with that comes with money and, and just the dangers, what to be aware of in that. Yeah, great question. Okay. So I'm going to set you free right now. The, yeah. it is totally okay <laughs> to be excited about making a sale and new money coming in for you and your family. That's awesome. Here's all you need to know. So um, earlier we mentioned Deuteronomy 8.18. Mm -hmm. The scripture right before it, if you read all of Deuteronomy 8, it's talking about all the blessings you're going to have when you enter your promised land. And it says your gold will be multiplied, your silver will be multiplied, your cattle, everything that you have. You'll have great houses. And it goes on and on. It gets very detailed on the, like this awesome promised land. Verse 17, it just says this. Don't say that you got this by your strength, by your hand, or by your might. It says, just make sure that you remember the Lord your God who gave you the power to get wealth. So all, all that's saying is just give God the credit for it. That's Deuteronomy you be, 17. Yep, 8, 17. You can read all of Deuteronomy 8, yeah. but that was specifically 17 leading into 18, which is the power to get wealth scripture. Remember the Lord your God in that. Just remember him. He gave you the power. So it's just it's just a a gratefulness and thankfulness position. It's saying, I didn't do this because I'm awesome and I'm so good. I'm the man. It's thank you, Lord. This is phenomenal. One, the finances bless me and my family fires me up, but then also I'm gonna show up great for this family and I'm gonna help them to the best of my ability. They're gonna get A plus 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 service. I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm going to get with God and make sure the plan I give them is of him and that they will be successful. Blessing environment. That is a blessing. That's momentum right there, which is everybody wins. That's how we look at this stuff. Mm -hmm. It is totally fine to get excited about making a sale and new money coming in because you're excited that 
man, one, God's fulfilling the covenant. He's doing what he said he would do. He's getting the glory. It wasn't me. It was him. Let's go. I'm going to do some awesome stuff with this money. You're going to tithe. You're going to be generous. You're going to use it to set your family up. It's just how the kingdom works is where everybody's blessed. Everybody wins. In the world, sometimes it can be where one person gets, but it takes away from another. One person increases, but another decreases. In the kingdom, everybody increases. In the kingdom, it, everything is up because God's hand of blessing is on all of it. When we do it the right heart, which you do, I know you. So anytime that we feel, I think this will help somebody too. When, whenever you feel guilt and condemnation around anything, but we'll just say money. Remember that the Bible, it talks about the devil. It calls him the accuser of the brethren. So those are actually accusations. You're being guilty right now. Mm, you're, you're getting too excited about money. Oh, watch out, you're gonna get greedy. Watch out, you're gonna get selfish. Watch out, you're gonna be money focused. Watch out, watch out, get, get, get. And that's different than a conviction. Guilt and conviction aren't the same thing. So they can sometimes seem similar, but when we know the heart of the Father, correction is, is loving and it steers you back towards scripture. So if you're feeling guilt, shame, and condemnation, that's not from our Heavenly Father. That's how the enemy speaks to us. So just be aware of that when it comes to making money, when it comes to even, there's probably some people watching this um, that think it's weird I'm talking about the Bible and money so much and they might get all riled up or something, but it's all in here. It's all in the book. It's all in the scriptures. And so I'm not even saying it's all about, like I actually have said the exact opposite. It, this is not all about getting rich. It's all about doing what you were called to do. The kingdom changes your focus. The kingdom's focus is on the king and doing what he's called you to do. Then the money is added to you. This is Matthew 6, 33. When we do it the other way, you guys uh, mentioned Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You, you, you said some of this sorrow, that definition when you look up the original Hebrew word, it means toil, it means exhaustive labor, it means pain, it means grief, all mixed together. Well, that's the world's way. The world's way has sorrow with it. The world's way has the, the workaholic-ism with it. It has the, you give money all of your time, your focus, your allegiance, your heart, your affection. It's what you're constantly thinking about, constantly worried about. You make decisions, like you said, where you move across the country just to make more money and uproot your family from their friends, their church, their home, led by money. Money's making your decisions. This is not correct. This is a recipe for disaster. This is a recipe for pain, for discouragement, for depression, for worse. But the blessing of the Lord, it still makes one rich, but without the sorrow, without the pain, without the grief. That's where we want to live. We want to live under the blessing. I'm, I'm telling you guys, you'll still get the same results. It's a focus shift. Right. Our heart is not in the money. Our heart is in God. And then he adds the money. He'll give you the steps. He'll give you the instructions. And when I say add the money to your life, guys, that does not mean you sit on the couch and do nothing and you get magical checks to your mailbox. Nobody's saying that. We are not saying that. He'll give you the ideas. He'll bring the opportunities, but you got to act on them. This is the power and ability to get wealth. You've got the power and the ability, but you got to go activate it. You've got to go do something with it. And here's the best part. Just ask him what to do. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was like, oh my God. He's going to say this. The instructions. Let me read it. Let me read. Let me read a scripture to you. This is James one verse five. You got to remember God's heart towards his kids is he's on your team. He's for you, not against you. Say that again, That's James. That sometimes. Say What's that, that again. Uh, James, James, what? James one verse five. Okay. If any, this is in the amplified Bible. Listen to what it says. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide you through a decision or circumstance. All right. So think about your circumstance. Think about your financial circumstance or a financial decision. If you lack wisdom there, you don't know what to do. He is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously without rebuke or blame, it will be given to him. So what it's saying is if you lack wisdom in something, I don't know what to do here. That person, the command there is he is to ask. He's to ask. Mm -hmm. And it says God will give to everyone generously. If you ask, he'll give you the answer. And it says, without rebuke or blame meaning have you ever had that thought where it's like i can't ask god for that like he doesn't there's more important things he doesn't care about that like i'm kind of bugging god he's Caesar. got more important things to do yeah. 
just stepped in. Accuser. That's the accuser. A hundred percent. Cause he doesn't want you asking. He doesn't want you and God teaming up. So he's going to throw all this stuff at you to make you feel guilty and weird. And you're wasting God's time. Oh, you're being too money focused. You're just being greedy. Oh, don't even, cause he doesn't want you to win. God wants you to win. God says, I always lead you to victory. The enemy always leads you. Sometimes that looks like mediocrity. Sometimes it looks like paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes it looks like you made some money, but you're not fulfilled inside. With God, you win in all the areas. It's a great way to live. If you need wisdom, just ask and he will give it to you. Okay. So second part to that, sorry to interject. Yeah, go on. When someone gets to that realization, I'm going to ask God for wisdom on this. And back to my example earlier when a say a pastor reaches out to me or someone in the church in a high position and i'm talking about their on their finances let's say they already did that they they asked god for support they've got their belief about money correct and wealth and everything is is good there when god delivers the answer it's not going to be one specific way correct he may speak to us audibly he may speak to us maybe through someone a a a, someone that we confide in, that we trust, maybe in the body. I, I think it's obvious that if I ask God for an answer and then a YouTube video pops up and it is someone of faith, that I've heard many of my clients say this, that they prayed for wisdom, they prayed for guidance, and without trying to search for the answer, I popped up on their feed the algorithm, YouTube heard their prayer somehow, <laughs> and boom, my yeah, video got popped up, <laughs> and they then declared that that was, was God. I've always been, I always lean more logical, this is how God made my brain. I, I Not that I deny that that God can work that way, I'm just like, I'm always like, man, I don't, I don't, do I declare that? Do I um, ex do I receive that? Lord, I talk to you. I'm like, hey, help me out here. Like this person just said this. Yeah. I, I now feel an expectation. I must fulfill this. And uh, Lord, help me through that. It, whether it was you, you then double confirm. I need a triple confirmation, a quadruple confirmation on what they just said. And this is something that happens, Travis, like on a weekly basis. Every time I pick up couple new clients a, a week, whatever the case may be, an email comes through. They're like, this video I saw on this day, I prayed at this time, it came at this time, and now I'm client, and now I'm doing, and you just told me to do what God had said. And, and I'm like, whoa. So the question is, when you ask for that wisdom, are there distinct template formulas for us to know that God not only is going to answer that, prayer that ask or wisdom mm -hmm. in that circumstance or decision but the way he's going to deliver it are there a set number of ways that tend to be his his pattern in terms of how he delivers that answer to us that 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 result that we're looking for phenomenal question super powerful right here okay here's here's some uh prayer mistakes we make all right we're asking god james 1 5 and others Tell us to seek him, ask him for wisdom, and he'll give it to you. The next part, James 1, 6 says, you have to believe he actually answers you. Go read it for yourself. It's super cool the way it breaks it down. When you pray for wisdom, God, you see my financial situation and leave it open-ended. A lot of times we'll pray, God, do you want me to start a drop shipping business or a client-based business? Drop shipping is good for these reasons. And here's why a client-based business, I can make more money. And here's the, he might have a third option. Right, I just keep but going. We will... We will pray in these ways where we're trying to, we're basically, what we're doing is just talking ourselves in or out of something, mm -hmm. but we're calling it prayer. God, you see what's up? What do I do? And then how I, how I do it, it's usually dark, it's quiet. And then I write the first thought that comes to my mind. The first thought, I want to say always, for the sake of this interview, I'll say almost always, exactly what you're supposed to do. The second thought will tell you why that wouldn't work. And in Mark 4, the Bible talks about this, this scripture, this parable of the soil. And what it says is the sower, someone comes out to sow the seed, which is God's word. And then it'll say that the enemy will come immediately to try to steal that seed, like a bird picking a seed off of the path. And that's what I think of when it's like, man, I prayed, I got a thought, 
with instruction attached. And then immediately it was like, well, I can't do that because like I don't have a college degree. So that must not have been God. Well, I can't do that because I'm not good on camera and he told me to start a YouTube channel. So like he knows I'm an introvert. So like that, okay, that obviously wasn't God. That was, okay, I don't know. You asked a question and you got to an answer. That's exactly what James 1, 5 says will happen. I have this conversation many times in our program where people will say, I asked God, I didn't hear anything. 100% of the time, it just happened to you, 100% of the time. I'll ask a few more questions, and then they'll say, well, when I pray, I actually do get this thought or impression, but obviously I'd have to make some more money first or do this other thing before that would happen. So every single time it proves true they got an answer, but they talk themselves out of it every time. Mm -hmm. Or they let the enemy talk them out of it is what I believe really happens. However you slice it, you're getting an answer when you pray, and then you come up with logic sometimes and say why it wouldn't work. And then you say, I guess God didn't answer me because you're thinking he's going to answer a certain way. And actually what's happening here is like, it's just a lack of faith and a lack of trust. He wants you to win. I have kids. Guess what? I want them to win. They come to me and they ask me for wisdom on things. Do you think I withhold it from them? Do you think I, I give them bad advice because I want them to lose to learn a lesson or something? No, oh, I instruct them on how to be successful. I give them wisdom. That's how our Heavenly Father is. It's back to those money beliefs. It's back to those money issues. Look, money is important. It's just not the number one thing in our lives, but it is important. Yeah. And so when our heart is focused on God and we're seeking him first, this is what Matthew 6, is talking about. When you seek him first, it says he will add all the things you need to you. It's what we've been talking about this whole time. It's just reversing the order. We keep seeking the things and seeking the money and then wondering why our lives aren't great and wonder it hasn't really worked in the last 30 years. Why do I keep doing it? Just seeking the things, seeking the stuff, looking to it for security, looking to the stuff for happiness. Just, hey, Denzel, just show me what business to start. Just tell me what's working now. Yeah. Do all the thinking for me. Uh -huh. And here's the, here's the problem with that question. Look, I'm not knocking anybody to ask that question. I've asked that question. I've got to ask to me a ton of times. It, that part doesn't, if you're asking that question, I think you kind of mentioned this. If you're asking that question, you're thinking about the whole thing incorrectly because the person who asks that question won't even put in the effort to make that thing work because that thing is going to take time, effort, and energy to get it working. If Denzel says you should start a drop shipping business that sells podcast microphones, well, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of work to get that thing to work, to get that thing to be successful. Right. So you might as well just go to God and say, God, what do you want me to work on? What do you want me to go do? What do you want me to build? What's the way for increase to come into my life? He'll tell you. And it might be an idea that you th that wouldn't work. But if the master tells you, I believe it'll work. And I'll say this too. The answer you're going to receive is something you've already somewhat thought about. It's already somewhat in your wheelhouse. So like with Denzel, since a kid, he has been interested in being successful with finances. You said, I was good at money since I was a kid. What you really meant is was disciplined and a forward thinker. That's lacking in a lot of people today is being disciplined and a forward thinker. Most of us aren't disciplined and we only think about right now. God will help us with all of these things. When like look at Denzel now and the progression of his life, the, that thing that was interesting to him as a kid, that's God just the seeds. God was sowing those seeds. He was getting them on the right path, getting them in the right direction. What he's done well that most of us haven't is he didn't cover it up with all these money fears and mammon and all this stuff that most people get caught in. He's maybe dealt with some of it, but for yeah. the most part, he's kept a straight path on what God has put on his heart to do. And now he's using his passion, his skill set for his purpose. It's a great way to live. That's yes. available to anybody uh -huh. who seeks him first. And back to James 1, 6, you just simply have to believe that he can do it. So the, I think there's a combination because what, what the non-believer might be thinking right now or the, what the Christian struggles with is the belief that God can actually do that for them based on all their prior sins they've committed to the kingdom and out of the kingdom and mm -hmm. continue to commit. So there's that problem that your everyday Christian faces. The non-believer is like, dude, so now I have to believe in this potential unknown result that this would yield and this would be profitable. At the same time though, it's not like we're throwing out principles of generating wealth. It's not like once I get the idea to start that YouTube channel, that I'm just going to keep sort of praying for this God creator to keep 
to make that YouTube channel successful. No, no, he just gave right. the idea and he's giving you the power, skills, talent, resources, and connections to now go make it happen. So it's, it's what the world is still doing. The world is still saying, go create yeah. a lot of content, make quality content, quality over quantity typically and then in the beginning it, temp it tends to be uh, quality over uh, 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 quantity over quality in the beginning and then you can you know uh, make changes you get better because you're gonna be bad as a new youtuber with zero subscribers like and zero, zero videos and all these different I, things I like, that. I like that you can get quality through quantity yes absolutely. i like looking at that way mm -hmm. and so you're we're still going to do the things that would align with the YouTube algorithm because now you're in the world. So you have to understand how world systems work, how YouTube works, algorithms, analytics, comments, your, your audience base and how to serve them the best you possibly can. And you provide an irresistible offer and you do all these things and you sell and you communicate and you do all these things that bring success and bring ROI there's nothing bad technically about doing all those things it's just a matter of who did you give credit to you or god you, it's really your only two options either you gave credit to yourself or some idol of you someone you idolize that looks like you talks like you thinks like you that could be your guru your coach your mentor and so you give them the glory a man or woman uh, or a system or an organization or a country, United States of America, whatever it may be, you're giving glory to something, someone else, other than God, the source, the creator. And therefore, even when you win, you still lose because it'll come with massive amount of pain, anxiety, stress, struggle, and every wealthy person on the planet can give their testimony. You talk to anybody successful in any industry, even the Christian and most importantly, the non-believer will say the same thing. It's hell. It's hard work. It sucks. You might get a divorce. You might lose your friends. You might do this. You might have a bad relationship. People will die in the process, all this stuff. That's because of how they obtained it versus in, in, in the kingdom. As I understand it, bones will still break. People will still pass away. Things will still happen. But the, the transaction of that wealth to you to steward over, there was no pain in that delivery. There was no sorrow. There was no death. It was only life. So when I, every time I obtain a new client in my business or I serve someone and that results in a, in a transaction, I can honestly say for the last few years, it has been no pain, no sorrow, no death, only life in that, in that transaction. Now, if I experience fight, flight, or freeze, afterwards that isn't because of the transaction that is now the accuser stepping in and messing with my brain in that moment and i have to rebuke it and cast my fear back to god and say hey i just you know i just experienced this whoa 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 i just bought this house uh, uh i'm a little you know anxious i'm a 28 year old new homeowner i i'm you know i got my fiance i got my my mom and i'm, and I'm taking care of these people and 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 all this stuff is happening uh-oh you know, and I got these cars and oh, oh shoot, you know, the finances, my, my uh, revenue in March was a little bit down. <laughs> so that'll still happen. But from how I've been experienced, the transaction of wealth, when, when I get it, when I receive it from God and, and money in the form of an exchange in the marketplace, no pain, no worry, yeah. no fear, no doubt, no concern. It's just there. It hit the bank account. It added another zero and it's there and it's now the, the the pains that occur afterward is not because of what God gave me. It's just, it just happens in life. You, you're going to sweat. You're going to might, you might get cut. You might bleed a little bit. You're going to live. Right. Cause yeah. there's, there's life. And we're tough. We're tough. We're tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all right. right. But the, that in, in that stuff you described afterwards, I think a lot of people are, they think that gaining wealth or accumulating wealth, always comes with basically a painful result like what you just described yeah. now I, I don't think that that's necessarily the case and here's here's how I, i'd encourage you guys to look at it is when we have a a a peace in our heart see this this is where we have to get in life and with god is that we are at 
peace in our heart now. We have faith and trust in God now. And a word you and I have talked about, Denzel, content. When you are in that spot and you have that foundation in your life, you're that type of person, more money will not affect you negatively. Correct. The things in life still happen, but because I've got that stance in that place, they don't phase me anymore. They don't phase me like they used to. They might reveal some business systems and strategies I need to tweak and adjust. They might to reveal some things I need to work on and develop in. I'm not saying they won't happen and I'm not saying, you know, we never get affected and and, and we don't have moments where we got to catch ourselves. Yeah, but that's because we're developing, we're working on this stuff. But really in life, here's a truth, is it, it it's not that life, like I've, I've looked at people who have gained success and fame over the years that I've known for long, periods of time, more and more success. They've become better at the craft. They've mastered things. It seems like things get easier as they do that. But the truth is, is they actually get stronger. They are less affected by outside things because their inside has gotten stronger. Their faith has gotten stronger. So you still might get that bad report. You still might get that negative thing. You still might get that employee, that key employee that quits. You might get that investment that tanks because you worked on it in here. Oh. You have that peace and that trust and that faith in God that he's got me. I'm out here just following my marching orders. I'm in the master's hands. I've consulted with the father. I know what I'm to be doing. Okay, bad thing happened. That's all right. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm on a mission. Let's go, let's roll, let's keep going. I don't want people to fear that other side, because if they fear that other side that you just described, they won't, they'll, they'll self-sabotage. They will short circuit and never even get close to wealth or an abundance of finances, however we want to define it. Right. And, and I'll say it like this. Um, we didn't even really go there today, but in lots of times when I speak about faith and finances, people will put words in my mouth and take it to the extreme. And I haven't, been, I, I don't know that I haven't been looking at the chat, just talking to you. But the a, a thing that's pretty often is I'll be like, well, Travis, not everyone's supposed to be a millionaire. God didn't say he'd make everybody a millionaire. I'm like, I didn't say that either. Right. It almost feels I mean, like an implication when, right. when people are, are listening to you from the, from the top of the mountain, because that's how they're looking at you or, or me or anyone that's an influencer. Like, well, they're at the top of the mountain. They seem to be millionaires. <laughs> and it's like, well, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> no one said millionaires we're we're discussing that that base foundation from there your mountain will grow uh, so i want to be mindful yeah. of your time but definitely I, you know finish your point there but i want to be mindful of your time because i know you got to go soon. i appreciate that i was not mindful of my own time i'll just flown over here thank you um <laughs> the I, I could talk i could i could talk with you for hours just so you know <laughs> i know uh, I, was, I was having a good time hanging out with you yeah. but listen i do believe that god for everybody has an abundant supply available. That means I believe everybody should have more than enough. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. You're not living hand to mouth. You're not asking, needing a handout all the time. God has a place for you when you are following the instructions, when you are asking for wisdom, consulting the Father. That's one of my favorite phrases you've, you've given me. When you're consulting the father, he'll tell you the steps to take, but it's up to you to take them. There are principles in this book, like you were mentioning earlier. I'm not saying that God is going to drop paychecks in your lap. There are principles in here that teach you how to be successful, that bring about wealth. Proverbs 10.4 is a great one that brings about the practicality. It says, he who works with a negligent or idle hand will end in poverty, but the hand of the diligent, if you go and get the definitions of those words, think about it in a, in a practical standpoint, YouTube channel, a business, a book, whatever God's put on your heart to do. Negligent means negligent and idle. I neglected it. Uh, you may have neglected your investments up until this point. You may have neglected your finances. You don't know how much comes in and how much goes out. You've neglected them. You've been idle. I've had this idea, but I've been talking about it for a decade. It's just saying if you live that way, you're going to end in poverty. But the hand of the diligent. So that's a that's a an adjective. The hand of the diligent, the diligent person. That guy, that gal who is diligent, that brings riches. Diligent simply means this. It means steady in application towards the thing you want. It means giving it due attention. If you give your business, your YouTube channel, the book you're trying to write, your finances, your investments, if you give them due attention, you're steady in the application. Every day I wake up, I'm gonna record a video. 
Every day I wake up, I'm going to write for 20 minutes on the book. Every day I wake up, I'm going to do 50 prospecting emails, phone calls. Every day I wake up, I'm going to do these steps that get me towards my goal. And the Bible tells us if you take that approach, it will end in riches. A lot of Christians don't take that approach. A lot of people, well, people in general. But like if we're talking about the, the fallacies that Christians can have around wealth or, or even those who are watching who, who aren't Christians. It's like, no, 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 this isn't some magical thing. The principles are in here. The steps are in here. He tells you how to live and what to do. Put the principles into motion. You'll get the results he promises. It is it's that simple, Denzel. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I appreciate you your time. Yes, this helps tremendously. I know you got to bounce. So I'm going to take over. For those that are still with us, we've got 42 people in the house. I have Travis's YouTube channel in the, in the comment section there. Please check it out if you want to dive deeper on this topic of what is your relationship with money. He recently dropped a video um, that really goes over how to master money without it mastering you. And that's been a line that I use all the time on my case study videos when I'm sharing people's journey of how they're getting out of debt and improving their finances is the, the goal here is not just to become good with money and make a ton of money, but it's how do we have mastery over a thing where you are in a position where you no longer have to put the amount of time that maybe others would to yield the same result, right? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, comparing to sports. There are certain people who are just naturally good at certain things. And then there are standards of how we should operate for everyone. So as mm -hmm. it pertains to the topic of money, there should be a standard. We're not, I'm not saying you need to be at the top of the mountain, right? But you do need to have a foundation. And if you eventually get to the top of that mountain, then you might be given more responsibilities and more roles in the kingdom. And that is a blessing, not a burden. It is a yeah. blessing to pay someone off, pay, pay someone's debt off. It is a blessing to help someone accelerate their debt a little bit faster by you either loaning them or giving them some money uh, to consolidate their debts or put put them in a position where like, hey, I'll pay off all your debt in exchange for you paying me back, right? And I'm going to remove all this interest from you and that could be a transaction, right? So there, that could be something. Um, or maybe you charge no interest whatsoever to that person that's in massive amount of debt and they just pay you back the principal. Simple as that. And you that, 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 that Abrahamic covenant that you covered. He said, God said, I will bless you to be a blessing. I'm empowering you to go be a blessing. Like a, we talk about a blessing agent in other people's lives. That's, that's what we're doing here. Get rich and hoard it. Yeah. It's be a blessing so it can flow through you to other people. Absolutely. You guys, you guys know that. <laughs> All right. I got to roll. I appreciate you guys Absolutely. so much. Thank you, Denzel, for having me. You're awesome, man. We'll talk soon.